Welcome to my video on maladaptive daydreaming and memory. Today, we'll explore this fascinating topic through recent research and a compelling case study. Let's begin with the story of Ada. Ada is a 35-year-old woman with maladaptive daydreaming. She's facing numerous life challenges. Ada has a progressive vision impairment called retinitis pigmentosa, which has affected her independence since childhood. Ada was adopted uh, as an infant, and recently uh, she lost her uh, adoptive mother to cancer. Um, she experienced an abusive relationship, uh, which ended only uh, two years ago. And she currently struggles with unemployment, uh, relying on social security and her father's support. During the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, she became more isolated and developed fears about contamination. Uh, these fears led to compulsive cleaning behaviors. To cope with her emotional difficulties and with her visual impairment, she had engaged in vivid daydreaming often involving Disney characters. This is a, a theme, a, a fantasy world that she has been employing in her fantasy since childhood. However, this coping mechanism led to some unexpected issues. Ada began sharing stories with a family that blurred the line between fantasy and reality. For example, she told her father about getting a job as a child care assistant. Uh, this is something uh, she has been fantasizing about, but at some point became convinced that this is actually happening and reported it to her father. She also reported experiencing a miscarriage. And another um, issue that she has been reporting and sharing with her family is that she has been hospitalized with COVID-19. When she did that, she was panicking, she was frantic, she asked for help. In all of these cases, uh, her family tried to, to help by, uh, uh, for example, um, calling hospitals. She couldn't tell where she was, calling different hospitals to find out where she was, or trying to verify some of her other stories. Uh, for example, by asking, uh, uh, to, to visit her in her new employment site. These stories turned to be uh, fabrications, uh, causing distress for both Ada and her family. Importantly, she wasn't intentionally lying. Her daydreams had become so intense that she struggled to distinguish them from reality. I think that what... Uh, uh, exacerbated the problem was the, the fact that she was visually impaired. So her fantasy her daydreams uh, seem more real than, than her reality with eyes open. A psychological evaluation that uh, showed, revealed that Ada was dealing with multiple mental health challenges, including persistent depressive disorder, PTSD as a result of her uh, the abusive relationship she survived, a generalized anxiety disorder, OCD, attention deficit disorder, and maladaptive daydreaming. Um, this is an interesting story because it uh, sheds some light on the possibility of blurring the boundaries between fantasy and reality. Ada was eventually helped. The treatment approach for her included uh, providing her family and her with reassurance that she was a pathological liar, educating uh, both the, the, her family and, and herself about maladaptive daydreaming, and teaching Ada strategies to better differentiate between reality and fantasy. So after 22 weekly therapy sessions, including two family meetings, Ada showed significant improvement, and a year later, she had secured a part-time job as a nursery teacher, uh, teacher's aide and reported no further incidents of confusing fantasy with reality. 
However, she continued to engage in in a lot of of uh, intense daydreaming that uh, was a little less maladaptive. So this case study showed that uh, confounding fantasy and reality in maladaptive daydreaming is possible. But how likely is it? Now let's look at what recent research tells us about maladaptive daydreaming and memory. A study by Pia Breuer, uh, a graduate student uh, in, uh, at the University of Utrecht in the Netherlands, and others, myself included, found that maladaptive daydreaming is related to fantasy proneness, but they are not exactly the same thing. Surprisingly, people with maladaptive daydreaming don't seem more likely to engage in what-if thinking than others, and in what-if fantasies than others. Despite having vivid imaginations, people with maladaptive daydreaming don't appear to be at a higher risk for these kind of memory distortions. This suggests that while people with maladaptive dating have active imaginations, they're not necessarily more prone to memory mistakes than others, at least not of that kind. Another study led by Henry Otgar and myself explored the connection between childhood trauma and maladaptive daydreaming. We found that 56% of participants reported traumatic childhood experiences. Common trauma included family stress, isolation, neglect, abuse, witnessing violence, and very uh, commonly bullying. For example, one participant, age 33, shared, my classmates used to be mean to me. They used to humiliate me in front of everybody. They also punched me, pushed me from, from the stairs, tore my notebook, kicked my leg. So this is an illustration of the kind of uh, hardships some of our respondents went through. Our study identified several types of trauma-related daydreams, reliving negative experiences, creating corrected versions of, of traumatic events. So this relates to the topic of this, of this uh, video uh, associated with memory and imagining empowering scenarios in which they experience themselves as, as, as competent, self-confident and assertive. For example, Ursula, age 44, explained Yes, it is an attempt to correct things in my own mind, resolving bad experiences when young. Adaptive daydreaming often develops as a way to escape or process trauma, providing temporary relief from emotional distress. So Ulrika, for example, age 41, shared a poignant example. I've had many daydreams where I saved my stillborn babies. Or... Both of them come to me in my waking life and I express to them how much I love them and how honored I am to be their mom. So this is how she compensates for losing uh, uh, her, her babies uh, early on in the stillborn, stillborn uh, by uh, developing storylines that compensate for this awful traumatic experience. Our study found that 51% of the participants saw connections between their trauma and daydream content, with 24% reporting creating empowering storylines in their daydreams. Neva, for example, age 24, explained, my daydreams, especially for my my bullies are kind of like fighting and defeating them again and again. I'm making up for the oppression, she said. Importantly, most participants could distinguish between real memories and daydreams. Adela, age 24, noted, I do trauma daydream quite often, but I've always managed to distinguish it from reality. Uh, 
In a follow-up study, uh, Odgar and I found that about half of the participants had at some point mistaken a daydream for a real memory. This typically happened with plausible scenarios involving real people and places. Here are some, so, some of the main findings from that study. First, some people struggle to distinguish between vivid daydreams and real memory, especially when the daydreams involve familiar settings and people. So if you are daydreaming about uh, unicorns and angels, uh, or a scenario that takes place in a castle in the in uh, medieval times, it is unlikely to confuse that with the real events. However, if you daydream about interactions with people you actually know, this is much more likely. Another finding was that daydream conversations or events can influence real life interaction and decision making. For example, if you rehearse a um, a conversation or you have a, a, a discussion with somebody you know, next time you meet him or her, you might not be sure if this conversation happened in reality or in your fantasy. And you may uh, make it an error and assume that it happened in reality while it hasn't. Another finding from that study was that people may daydream about past events with different outcomes, leading to confusion about what actually happened, particularly since people are motivated to have corrective emotional experiences and experience events in which they felt disempowered, uh, disenfranchised, uh, discriminated against, taken uh, advantage of, um, this kind of experiences motivate some people who have the ability for immersive daydreaming to create alternative scenarios that make them feel better. Mina, for example, age 33, shared an example. It happens when I daydream about something that really happened, but giving it a different ending. For example, she said, if someone, uh, is rude to me or was rude to me and I don't do anything about it, what is always, which is always my reaction, later I may daydream about that situation, but in my imagination, I fight back. I fight back that person. Some days after that, I might be confused of what was my real reaction because I've reproduced in my daydream most parts of the real situation. And I might add, with a slight twist or change that helped her feel better about herself. Another finding was about wishful thinking. So intense fantasies about desired outcomes can sometimes feel real, even when they are implausible. Furthermore, most people realize their mistakes when confronted with evidence or through self-reflection. For example, Uri, age uh, 18, explained how he verified his memories. The only evidence I have for this is asking the people around me who were there if it actually happened. For instance, um, I asked my sister as she was there at the event, and I double-crossed my recall of events with hers to see if if it matched, it didn't. So realizing a memory was actually a daydream can, can be emotionally distressing, obviously. Valerie, for example, age 35, shared, I can only describe that moment of realization as absolutely crushing. It was shocking and difficult. And honestly, everything about the daydream and the moment of realization haunts me. So what does all this mean? First, maladaptive daydreaming can be a complex mechanism, especially for those with trauma histories. This mechanism may have compensatory um, uh, effects, 
but it can also sometimes lead to some confusion. While daydreaming, mild adaptive daydreaming involves vivid imaginations. However, it doesn't necessarily lead to increased memory er errors. However, some people may occasionally confuse plausible daydreams with real memories. So this confusion typically occurs with realistic scenarios rather than fantastical daydreams. Most individuals with maladaptive daydreaming can distinguish between fantasy and reality, especially when prompted uh, to reflect. Our findings shed light on the old uh, memory wars uh, in which um, uh, cognitive psychologists doubted the veracity of trauma memories that were suddenly recalled after a long time of, of repression or dissociation. Their claim was that they, that they most probably are making this up are, are, and that these are productions of fantasies. Our evidence, the evidence that we sh showed in our studies, indicates that people are not motivated to re-experience their pain. On the contrary, they're motivated in their fantasies to alter uh, unfavorable or painful outcomes to make them feel more empowered. Uh, so it is unlikely that people will make up traumatic memories. The good news is that with proper support and strategies, people like Ada, that's the person we described uh, at the onset of this uh, video, people such as Ada, like Ada, can learn to better manage their daydreams and to distinguish uh, between fantasy and reality. Uh, our research highlights the, the, the intricate relationship between imagination, memory, and coping mechanisms. And it reminds us um, of the importance of understanding and addressing underlying issues to help individuals lead more balanced lives. While people with maladaptive daydreaming have very active imaginations, they're not necessarily more prone to memory mistakes than others. However, we still have much to learn about how maladaptive daydreaming affects thinking and memory in everyday life. Future research, uh, we believe, should focus on developing better ways to study how people with maladaptive daydreaming might mix up imagined and real events in uh, everyday life and whether they are more likely to create false memories spontaneously. That's it for today. I thank you for joining us today and see you in our next uh, video. Bye-bye.